Elizabeth here, back again with another bullet journal setup, this time for August. And y'all know if you've been here with me for a while that August is my birthday month. So I always put extra pressure on myself to make a theme that I'm really gonna like for my birthday every year. And this year I was struggling so much with picking a theme. I kept going back and forth on a couple that I had had planned for a while, but none of them felt quite right until I decided I wanted to do something very vintage feeling, scrapbooky, layered, sort of similar to the style I do in my reading journal. I do a theme like this in my bullet journal every once in a while, I'd say maybe once or twice a year, and this felt like the right time. I was really in the mood for something very cozy and layered and quaint and textured and that is what this theme is going to be. Something I did the last time I did a scrapbook theme in my bullet journal that I wanted to do again was extending the tabs to be basically the full length of the page and just have them sort of layered so that you can really see all the different textures and papers and washi tapes, whatever I'm using, at a glance. And so to do this, I just left two spaces for each tab working my way back from the last week to the first week so that you can kind of have that peekaboo effect of the weeks to come. And then this allowed me to pick out some fun papers for my stash and create a really nice layered look with different color values and textures and patterns. So of course I used some tea stained paper. That is my go-to, although I am running low now on tea stained paper. I definitely have to make some more soon. If you haven't seen my tutorial showing how I make tea stained paper, I will link that down below. It's super easy to do. I also had some brown wrapping paper from packages that I've saved and some pretty textured paper that I got in a pack of specialty papers. I'll do my best to link all the supplies I'm using in the description box, but I have been accumulating these supplies over the years, kind of here and there, piecemeal, and just dumping them all in my reading journal supplies box. So. I don't remember 100% where I got everything and it might not all still be available, but I'll do my best. I'm finishing off my tabs by using my handy dandy corner rounding cutter <laughs> tool to make these corners perfectly round to match the curve of the actual pages of my notebook. I feel like this is such a perfect way to finish these off. It's a really beautiful finishing touch. It looks very professional. And it's also way faster than me cutting it myself and a lot more consistent. I feel like a corner cutter is such a novelty product that not everyone needs, but I have actually found it very handy since I've purchased it. I don't use it often, but when I do use it, I am reminded yet again how happy I am <laughs> that I spent the seven bucks or whatever it was to get my corner cutter. I wanna take a quick second to thank this video's sponsor, Majuri. I'm so excited to be working with them. Majuri is all about redefining luxury. They wanna turn fine jewelry into an everyday occasion while keeping in mind their impact on the planet with responsibly sourced materials. Their pieces are made to last a lifetime and you can really feel that quality. Majuri pieces all have a really timeless yet modern feel, which makes them super versatile. You can wear them no matter what your personal style is, is, and you can wear them for years and years and years without them ever going out of fashion. Majuri has a range of pieces to fit every need from gold vermeil and sterling silver to 14 karat gold and white gold and stunning options in both natural and lab grown diamonds. The pieces I got were the chunky medium hoops, which are a gold vermeil. They have a really nice weight to them that makes them feel really high quality and like they're gonna last for a really long time, but they don't feel heavy or uncomfortable in my ears. I'm a huge Huggy fan. I love that there's nothing digging into my head when I wear this style of earring. And these ones have just a little bit more of a punch to them. They're a little bit more of a statement earring because of that thickness without being over the top. 
I feel like I could wear these with literally any outfit and they would look amazing. I also picked out the gorgeous diamond necklace. This is 14 karat gold with a natural diamond in the center. It's so minimalist and timeless and classy and beautiful. This really is a piece that you will hold on to forever and pass down in your family. It's just so absolutely gorgeous. But again, it's done in such a beautiful, minimalist, timeless way that it could be worn on a day-to-day -day basis without feeling like it was too dressy or over the top, but you could also wear it with an evening gown without looking out of place. The last piece I picked was this gorgeous hue necklace. This is also 14 karat gold with white topaz, and I love the asymmetry of this, the two little triangles that are slightly offset and not quite the same size. I just find them so beautiful, and there's a little bit of whimsy to this one, which is quite nice, and it's very delicate, very beautiful, and it's simple enough that you could wear it just going to the grocery store if you wanted to, but again, it has that elevated, really elegant look that could make it appropriate to wear to a wedding or something. I'm so happy with these pieces. I just find them absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to incorporate them into my style on a day-to-day -day basis. They're also really great for mixing and matching or layering, which is something I love to do. I initially picked out these two necklaces to wear separately, but they look so pretty layered together, just adding that little bit more detail. And I love that I have so many options to create unique combinations that can suit my mood from day to day. And I just know I'm gonna love wearing these for years and years and years to come. They're gonna be with me through some pretty special moments. I'm just so happy to be working with Majuri on this video. If you wanna check them out, make sure to click the link in my description box or use the QR code on the screen. Thank you again to Majuri for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back into setting up my bullet journal for August. So now that my base is sorted out and I have my tabs cut, it's time to start on the cover page. And I knew I wanted this to be very layered, lots of color and texture and different materials and just feel very cozy, but also summery. So I wanted to start with this paper. This is a really beautiful textured paper with dried flowers that have been pressed into it. And I really loved this blue and gold flower. I thought it was really beautiful in and of itself, but also that it contrasted the really warm tones of all the papers I was using and planning on using it really nicely. I actually ended up going for a lot of blues and purples for the accents in this theme, which y'all will know as well if you've been here for a while that those are not my go-to colors. But because I had so much warmth already with all of these papers and the background, it felt really nice to have a little bit of a contrast of some cooler colors with the greens and the blues and the purples. So I'm really happy with how it all works together and kind of balances things out. My process for building scrapbooky type spreads is really just to pull out a bunch of different supplies that I think might work and play around with layering different ones together, trying different layouts, trying different options until something catches my eye or feels right somehow. I can't really describe it any other way. It's just kind of tossing things together until it looks right, you know? And I feel like the hardest part of it for me is knowing when to stop because I think it is too easy for me to keep going, keep adding more and more and more, and then realize that maybe I went one or two layers <laughs> too far and there's no going back. So this time I was really trying to take it slow and pause a lot and take a step back, take a look from a different vantage point and really try to determine if I could be done <laughs> or if it was missing something. Once I had the basic composition of my cover page done, I knew some of the larger elements I wanted to incorporate. I just started adding little details here and there, little stickers, little bits of washi tape, just adding more color and texture and pattern wherever I felt it was needed. And again, I don't really know <laughs> how to describe how I do this. I just do. And you know what? I am really happy with how the cover page turned out. I feel like I stopped at the right time. It's definitely busy, but that's what I wanted. That is what I am going for often when I go for a scrapbooky feel. I want it to be very layered and sort of cozily cluttered, but I don't think I went too far. I feel like it's nicely balanced. There's still some negative space. I feel good about it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Moving on to the calendar, I'm starting by creating the boxes for the calendar itself. And I ended up making this quite elongated. It's quite tall and narrow to fit the width of this first tab, but I think it'll still be more than enough for my needs since I really only use my monthly calendars to write in appointments and birthdays and events. And I usually don't have more than one thing on a day. So as long as it's big enough for me to write in my tiny little handwriting, the one thing that might be happening that day, then we're good to go. I did know that I wanted to scrapbook up this calendar a little bit more. So I'm using this grid craft washi tape to fill in those extra bonus days from the end of July. And I'm using a little scrap of this paper that I used for the second tab, which is sort of a creamy white with gold flecks. To fill in the rectangle I'm using as the header for all the days of the week. I'm also incorporating some stamps and some washi tape to really carry over that feeling from the cover page so that they feel a little bit more cohesive, but there still felt like there was something missing. So I grabbed my sticker keeper. This is from Archer and Olive, it's vegan leather. It's really beautiful. If it's still in stock, I'll link it down below, but I have really enjoyed having my stickers and my little bits and bobs stored in here and organized. It's much easier to find what I'm looking for. But I decided to pull out a couple options because I felt like maybe one flower kind of on top of this craft grid section would help fill this in and, and give it more of that layered look. But I felt like the two flowers I pulled out were just a touch too large for the space or they weren't quite the right shape. But I had this little booklet of botanical drawings and this white flower with a little bit of foliage, some greenery seemed perfect. So I cut it out, leaving a little bit of a border and glued it down here. And I think it's just perfect. It just adds that last final element that was needed on this spread. Flipping over to my first weekly, I'm starting by drawing out the rectangles for each day of the week. And I'm still doing my slightly modified rolling weekly setup. You can check out the link in my description box to watch the video that I made dedicated to the rolling weekly if you wanna learn how this weekly spread works, why I use it, sort of the logic behind it, and some different options for how you can set it up. But this has been my current version for a while. And of course, when you do tabs this way, you end up with your first couple weeklies being smaller than your last couple. So there is less width here in the first weekly and then each weekly progressively gets a couple more spaces for each day. I don't personally find that it's enough of a difference to make it unusable. Slightly less width is doable. I think if I were making, you know, seven or eight tabs this way, the area after that first tab would be so tiny, I wouldn't be able to make a weekly out of it. But if I'm only making four or five, I don't find I even really notice having a little less space, but it's definitely something to keep in mind with doing tabs this way versus the traditional way that I tend to do tabs. I'm using my regular letter stamps to create this rolling task list section, but I remembered as I was grabbing supplies for this setup that I bought a date stamp a year and a half ago <laughs> on a visit to my favorite stationery shop back in Toronto, and I have not used it even once. So I decided to use it for this setup and I was really excited about it. And I felt like it was absolutely perfect for this scrapbooky theme. It felt very appropriate and kind of added to that vintage feel that I was going for. And I feel like now that I've used it once, I'm gonna remember that it exists and use it a lot more because it's definitely faster than stamping out a date with individual letters and numbers. I've stuck with the same four to five different washi tapes throughout the whole setup and mostly used flowers and butterflies as the added decor. And that really helps everything to feel very consistent, even though I'm using a bunch of different types of flowers and different colors and mixing things up quite a bit there's still a through line, you know? So let's do a final little flip through of these spreads. I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm really excited to use this for my birthday month. It feels very cozy and summery and nostalgic and whimsical to me. And I'm really happy about that. I really like it. Hopefully you liked this setup too, something a little different. Thank you again to Majuri for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in my description box or use the QR code on the screen to try some Majuri pieces for yourself. They truly are so beautiful. The quality is evident as soon as you take them out of the packaging. 
check out my Patreon if you want a printable version of this month's cover page as I create every single month for my patrons. Don't forget to check out my last video where I gave a tour of my extremely detailed and in my opinion, absolutely epic <laughs> reading tracker in Notion. This has been in progress for a year and I'm so proud of it and I think you'll like it too. And if you missed it, check out my last reading journal video where I set up my reading journal spreads for May and June and just gave a little recap of those reading months, gave you little reviews of all the books I read, whether I would recommend them or not. It's a fun, very casual, very chill and cozy video, kind of like this one. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you really, really soon in my next one. Bye friends. <laughs>